That's clear. Yeah, you ready? All right. Good evening. The Jackson Public School Board meeting is now called to order because of COVID-19. This meeting, March 17, 2020, is being held via teleconference or via Zoom. Board members, all members are present, um, and therefore we have a quorum. We've all had an opportunity to review the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Sivak has moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the agenda is approved. Next is the approving of the minutes. Board members, we have an opportunity, we've had an opportunity to review the minutes in advance. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for March 3rd, 2020? So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Harrison has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Dr. Green, superintendent's report. Yes, ma'am. I believe we have um, some updates that the team is queuing up. Is that, is that true? Okay, no, we don't. All right, so I've got several uh, remarks that I'd like to make. And forgive me as I move through these, everyone. Uh, greetings, uh, board members, to all of our, our JPS team members, our uh, scholars, parents, community members, all of those who are, have signed on or those who will be listening later on to this recording. Um, as is probably top of mind for everyone else, I want to speak a bit about the coronavirus COVID-19 um, pandemic and some of the things that we've been doing to address it and just to make sure that we bring everyone up to speed on that. As we work through the coronavirus pandemic together as a community, uh, please know that the, the district's top priority is the well-being of scholars, their families, and our team members. Because we know that some of our families will need assistance with meals starting tomorrow, March the 18th, 2020, we will open 12 grab-and-go meal sites. 12 grab-and-go meal sites where parents can pick up breakfast and lunch boxes from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. Meal boxes are free for children 18 and under. And parents can purchase those um, meals. The breakfast uh, can be purchased for $2.50. And lunch can be purchased for $3.25. I'm going to pause right there. I know this is a bit different for everyone, but if everyone on the line can mute their, um, their phones, um, we'll make sure that we don't have too much background noise. All right, everyone, please mute your phones. Thank you. So again, we'll have 12 distribution sites for meals. Um, they're free for children 18 and under. For parents, those uh, costs for breakfast, it's $2.50. And for lunch, it's $3.25. The following schools will serve as the dis distribution sites for meals. They are Boyd Elementary, North Jackson Elementary, Fan Elementary, Blackburn Middle, Lake Elementary, Rains Elementary, Galloway Elementary, Smith Elementary, Peoples Middle School, Marshall Elementary, Wilkins Elementary, and Witten Middle School. Again, that's Boyd, Northwest, Span, Blackburn, Lake, Rains, Galloway, Smith, Peoples, Marshall, Wilkins, and Witten. 
And all of those are on our website. They're listed on our website as well. You can go to either of those sites. Uh, you don't have to go to the school that you attend or in your feeder pattern or your neighborhood. But obviously, we urge you to go to the one that's closest and most convenient to you. Additionally, there will be grab and go meal box locations uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, March the 18th from 4 until 6 p.m. And that will um, be held or located at Pecan Park Elementary, which is at 415 Claiborne Avenue. And that's uh, we'll have 100 to 150 boxes uh, available there. That's tomorrow evening. So folks who are in that area or um, miss the, the grab and go distribution earlier in the day can go to Pecan Park. And then lastly, we'll have a grab and go meal box location Saturday, March 21st, and that's from 10 until 12. That'll be held at People's Middle School which is at 2940 Belvedere Drive. And they'll have about 40, 400 boxes. Again, at People's this Saturday, the 21st, from 10 until 12. And so um, we, we, we've done some work to try to create opportunities for those who might need additional help with feeding uh, during this time to go to those, uh, those sites. During this extended school closure, I know that many parents and guardians um, share our concerns about providing continuous learning opportunities for their scholars. To assist with that, our team has identified several resources for their use at home. And so I want to talk a little bit about that now. Uh, each of the meal sites that I've, I've just listed, and again, those are listed on our website, uh, each of the meal sites will distribute distance learning packets for scholars uh, from pre K through eighth grade. So again, at each of those uh, distribution meal sites, there will be distance learning packets for scholars in pre-K through eighth grade. And those packets will include activities for uh, mathematics and uh, English language arts, science, social studies, and writing. There'll be a reading log included there. And I'm told there's also uh, science experiments for young people to conduct while they're at home. So those packets will be available for pre-K through eighth grade. Our high school scholars can access Canvas, which is a platform um, that we use. Uh, they can access it with their, using their school login information for, for grade level activities. School students can access school grade level uh, activities using Canvas and using their uh, login. We also have online distance learning uh, resources for scholars that can be found on our website. That's at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. Um, and there you'll find uh, tons of resources uh, that, can be, um, that can be used to augment uh, our scholars' learning. Uh, if you have easy access to the internet and, and don't want to um, pick up the, the packets that are available at those sites, you can just go onto, the, um, onto our website and those, those packets are available there as well. That information is available there as well. We'll be adding more information and more resources over time, including some supports for our students with specific supports for students with special needs uh, and even a sample schedule for, uh, for parents. I want to uh, take a moment now just to talk about that. It is really, really important, and I'm, I'm sure many of our parents know this, but uh, it bears mentioning, really important that, um, that our young people uh, experience some level of structure while, while dealing with this school closure. And so to the extent that uh, parents and guardians that we can create a schedule for them, a time that they're reading, a time that they're working through either the, the paper copy of the, the packet that we have or uh, doing a reading log or, or something else um, using the online tools. <clears throat> it's very important that we have a structured time that they get up, that they do whatever chores, that they are in the, the school or the learning mode. 
um, any break time that you want to build in, that sort of thing. To the degree that you can create that structure, um, it'll ensure that when it's time for us to transition back to school, that there won't be such a tough transition for young people. And also in thinking about, um, this is a stressful time for the adults, of course, for you parents. Uh, we've seen tons of memes uh, out on social media of parents who are, who are dealing with uh, trying to juggle your adult uh, stuff, uh, work or what have you, as well as trying to, to teach and support your young people at home. And so we know it is a challenge and um, appreciate your patience as we move these uh, challenging times together. Um, but because it is stressful, we know it's stressful for adults. It's also, in, it can be uh, stressful for our young people as well. So in addition to all of the opportunities for scholars to learn more about those core curricular subjects, it's very important that we also provide them with times to um, express themselves more creatively and to uh, support their uh, social and emotional needs as well. So you might consider some of these activities. You could take a, a walk in the neighborhood or a nature walk and discuss what you see. You can read a variety of texts, that's magazines and um, online articles, books, of course, um, and other uh, items that, that might be around the house. That includes recipes and, and um, how-to manuals and all that sort of thing. Also, uh, exercising. Please, please, please ensure that young people get some opportunities to exercise and to kind of uh, work out some of that energy that they have. Might also uh, uh, dance during that time. Uh, I know I personally, from time to time, will take a boogie break at work um, and just kind of get some of that energy out. Uh, it's very important. Uh, and it also helps to kind of um, manage some of the anxious energy that you might have. Drawing, um, encourage young people to draw or paint or color um, and maybe create that next masterpiece, um, as well as writing a story or a poem or even a song. All of these things can help young people to process and to, again, to use some of their energies and, and their creativity um, and to just uh, provide some more opportunities for them to be meaningfully engaged. Uh, to our JPS team members, I know that there are questions and concerns about whether uh, staff members will be paid during this time of closure. This is a concern that we share along with our state and local leaders as well. Um, on tonight's agenda, I'm recommending to the board formally uh, that they approve the district's uh, school closure as well as um, as well as approval of, of uh, an issuance of administrative leave with pay uh, to all team members. Please note that, however, there are several functions that remain um, important and critical for us even during the closure. And in order for us to get those things done and things like processing payroll, uh, paying our bills and preparing and distributing the meals and, and several other things, uh, some team members will be identified as essential um, essential staff and, and will be required to work during this time. And so district leaders are in the midst of that planning to ensure that the critical functions are identified and fulfilled while maintaining still health and safety of, of our scholars and families and of our team members. As you've seen uh, to all of our community members and board members, staff members, uh, as you've seen, this is a rapidly evolving world health concern. It's not just a Jackson thing, of course, or Mississippi, it's a world concern. And so we continue to monitor the latest developments and, the, and to collaborate with the Mississippi Department of Education, with the Mississippi State uh, Department of Health, with the city of Jackson, um, of course, with our board members and with many, many partners who have raised their hands to say that they're willing and able to support us during this time. Um, and so we're, we're working collaboratively to understand um, as deeper understandings and as the understanding evolves over time to understand this challenge and this pandemic and to ensure that the um, most appropriate actions in resp response to health and safety concerns associated with coronavirus, and, um, that those actions are, are identified and taken. 
please visit the JPS website at uh, www.jackson.k12.ms.us for the latest information concerning the coronavirus and our efforts to protect the safety and well-being of our scholars and staff members, um, as well as uh, to go and to find the resources that I mentioned earlier. You can also connect with us. Please connect with us on Twitter, on Facebook, or even uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, for the latest information. We, we know that this is a challenging time. We know that there are many more questions with regard to the, the future of this school year, um, how long we'll be out on, um, uh, how, how long schools will be closed, and uh, any of the implications for activities that were planned for the end of the school year. We know that those issues remain and we know that folks are, are looking for answers to those. As we um, continue working with other superintendents, with our state superintendent, and as I said, other officials around the state, um, and as we have a clearer sense of the path forward, we will be sure to communicate that to you. Um, please be patient with us. We know people want answers right away, um, but we don't want to jump out there with half-baked truths um, and with, um, with information or making decisions without all of the information that's available to us. Know that we are thinking about each and everyone's best interest and in seeking to do the very best in leading our district through this uh, really challenging time. With that, board members, I believe that concludes my uh, comments and want to turn it back over uh, to you, Attorney Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Green. Um, I just want to take a moment to say and to let the public know that we started our preparation for this crisis before spring break and the team has been diligent um, trying to find solutions. Um, this is one of those situations that has never happened before. We don't necessarily have the advantage of experience but I can tell you that the district is prioritizing the safety of our children along with the responsibilities that the district has to them educationally. With that being said, um, we're moving on to information items only. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Um, can I just ask a question? Uh, um, uh, Dr. Green, before we move on to the information items. Sure. Um, Dr. Green, there was a lot of really um, helpful information in the PowerPoint that's attached. Could we post that PowerPoint in the coronavirus resource section of the website? And also, um, is there a plan to share um, the instructional distance learning um, the information about where the distance learning information will be uh, public. That is the first I'd heard of it and it's great. I'm excited to hear about it. Um, I just wanna make sure people know about it. The questions about uh, posting it, we'll be sure to post um, that information. Um, and I, I got a clarification here. Actually, um, oops, uh, there are a couple of clarifications that I need to make. One, um, it's not North, no, let me clarify, I'm sorry. Um, so the packet, the, you asked about the packet. There are packets for uh, pre-K through 12th grade, um, including high school students that may need hard copies uh, due to challenges with technology and accessibility. So I wanna make sure that people know that. We do have packets um, for, for all grade levels. Um, and those packets are available again at the feeding sites, at the, um, the 12 sites that we name. And those are, are listed um, on the website. We'll be sure to um, have that information. The team has already um, placed uh, the big banner, if folks haven't been in the last couple of days, to the website, a big banner um, with regard to the coronavirus. And so, um, Folks can easily navigate to the information and there, um, I don't have it up right now, but there are a couple of, of um, a few areas for folks to look in for information um, on the website. 
uh, around around information for families. I think it's bucketed for information for families, information um, um, for the community and others. So go to our website for that. I'm sorry, I think I've forgotten one of the other questions, sir. Um, it was it was largely just the communication strategy for alerting parents about the um, accessibility of the distance learning um, packets at the feeding sites. Gotcha. We um, I know that we have put all of this or are starting to get this out on our social media platforms. I'm not sure if it was named um, when the because we also did a, a robocall about the. Um, the meal sites. I'm not sure if it was named in the robocall, um, but that's something that we can do uh, going forward for sure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, board members? If not, um, we'll have Ms. Bingham for the information only item. Dr. Bing okay, appears to be having a little bit of a challenge with the audio. She is on the call, however. Um, okay, I can I can do it. Okay, um, this item, the Office of Exceptional Education Services, um, is presenting to the board for information only the service agreement with uh, Willsway Pediatric Behavioral Psychology to provide an independent education evaluation. Um, parents have the right to request outside. Uh -uh, uh, uh -uh. No. Was that for me? Oh, <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, uh, let me go back to it. I'm toggling between a few items here. Um, so parents have, um, have the right to request an independent evaluation at the expense of the district if they disagree with an evaluation that we've done um, to determine a student's um, uh, any special needs or what have you. And, and this is according to state board policy 74.19300.502. And so at the parents request, um, we're bringing this uh, item before the board um, to approve um, to have this independent evaluation done. Um, thank you, Dr. Green. Board members, are there any questions? Um, yes, I had a couple questions. Um, have have we worked with this vendor before? And um, if not, have we checked references on the vendor? My understanding is that I don't believe we have worked with them previously. And um, the the again, parents have the right to request um, the vendor that they want to use, um, okay. and so. And so in this case, we, we have not vetted them because it's the parent's prerogative. Okay, that's helpful clarification. Thank you. Sure. Um, any helpful? <clears throat> what about, is there a cap on this invoice? That was a question I think Dr. Cizak, you brought up. Is Dr. Bingham on? Still no. 
the, let me go back to it, the dollar amount that, um, I'm sorry, give me one moment. Is it possible for um, Dr. Bingham to um, answer the questions on the Zoom group chat? Okay, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. This is, the cost is not, is not to exceed 2,000. The, the cost of this assessment is not to exceed 2,000. Thank you, Dr. And Green. Yes, and, is that and yes, Dr. Um, I'm sorry. And yes, Dr. Bingham, if you're available. Um, oh no, no, I've got a, I've got a note here that uh, um, there's not a cap in the contract. We'd have to revise it if, if that's um, what's being asked for. Yes, we need to revise that. Any other questions? If there are no other questions on this item, we will move on. Um, to the MOU, Dr. Merritt. Yes, good afternoon, uh, President Johnson, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Green. Um, the recommended action is that the administration, we recommend that the administration um, amend the existing right now plan MOU between Jackson Public School District and the Community Foundation of Mississippi. And we want to amend the part that where $50,000 was allocated to the Hanover Research Group uh, we would like to use that money to pay for praxis support for teachers. I would like to. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Dr. Harrison. Thank you. Uh, I just want to tell Dr. Merritt and his team how um, good it is to see how you are revising the MOU to exactly fit the current needs of the district. Uh, you know, you and I and Dr. Murray, our CFO, we used to joke about when is right now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so I just thank you and your team for your hard work. And I support this. Uh, well, we're not ready to, to talk about that yet. But I, I appreciate your work. Thank you. Board members, are there any other questions or comments? Thank you, Dr. Merritt. Thank you. Board members, now we have information action items. Dr. Merritt? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so. Uh, the recommended action is that the Office of Federal Programs is recommending approval of the signing bonus addendum for the 2021 uh, school year. Um, of course, this is for our newly hired uh, teachers, and um, it will allow us to sign them up for a three-year incentive. Um, uh, in, if they agree to teach with the district, uh, embedded in the uh, executive summary is some data um, for your purview of those, the number that we issued this year, and, um, and just a little data on where we are with that. Board members, are there any questions, comments? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Merritt. And now we're back to Dr. Green. Um, uh, President Johnson, should we um, have a motion to approve this I would, item? I was going to. I was going to take them once? all together and yeah, okay. all at once that after was... we get done. Okay. Dr. Green. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the administration. Make sure that this is the right one. Yes, administration requests the board's approval um, of, a, of a recommendation to uh, close all schools and offices 
and to award administrative leave with pay for certain employees in compliance with, um, with uh, board policy um, AFA, emergency closing of school. So due to the national and state emergency declaration, to active measures to limit community spread and protect uh, public health related to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, um, I'm recommending that all schools and offices be closed indefinitely um, until such time as the emergency situation has been eliminated. After the emergency situation has been eliminated, the board will be required to reconvene to consider a recommendation to reopen schools and offices. Additionally, the recommendation is to award administrative leave to staff per board policy AFA, emergency closing of schools. The policy AFA allows to um, pay to continue for superintendents, principals, teachers, and other employees during or for the period when uh, any of the said schools are closed in accordance with Mississippi Code 3665-101 and 3765-103. Further, this policy directs that uh, during this closure that this period of time shall not be deducted or counted as leave. And so during the period of time and um, all full time, and those part-time employees who have a regular set schedule um, will be paid in accordance with the appropriate uh, pay schedule. That's the recommendation to board members. Um, I'll take any questions that you might have. Board members? Dr. Green, this is um, Robbie. Um, are there uh, large groups of employees who may be left out of this? It sounds like with a, uh, that we have a, an, an opportunity here to support the vast majority of our team in JPS. Of course, we all are worried about the impact this will all have on our children and our parents. Um, I, I do wanna make sure that we are thinking about all of our staff members as well. Yeah. They, um, we, we have included all staff, all um, full-time employees, um, so that's everyone, all full-time employees, as well as uh, part-time employees who have a, um, a set schedule. For anyone who comes in as needed, it's too hard to try and determine what that schedule, what their pay would have been um, going forward, and so they're not included. That's a very... Um, small number of, of our staff. The vast majority of folks have a set schedule um, and, and um, a set pay that they receive. And so those folks, uh, we want to make sure that we continue with that. Thanks for that clarification. I appreciate that. Sure. Any, Board any members, other are there questions? Yeah. Did someone have a question? Um, if there are no other questions, then we'll move on to the next action item. Dr. Chrysler. Good evening to the board president, all the board members, and the superintendent, Dr. Green. You have before you a recommendation to approve QRA to provide data and response services for the district. It is imperative that we secure these services to determine if a data breach did or did not occur, to analyze indicators of compromise or points of entry, to do a vulnerability assessment, and other tasks as outlined in the agreement. Considering the cyber risk that may still exist and to minimize the possibility of another cyber attack, the administration asks that you approve the recommendation before you. Thank you. Board members, are there any questions, comments? If there are no other questions or comments, is there a motion to approve the information action items A, B, and C? So moved. Is there second? It has been moved by Dr. Luckett and second by Dr. Harrison. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. 
Now we have consent agenda items, a consent agenda items finance. All of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Um, are there any further questions? Um, um, President Johnson, I had one question and it was just in regards to whether or not we were able to confirm the um, lifespan on the virtual reality um, equipment. That was a question we raised in the last meeting. Um, I just wanted to see if we were able to get confirmation on that. Uh, item. All right. Dr. Jackson. I believe Dr. Jackson answered it. I'm, I'm looking for the response um, right now. I apologize. Um, Five years. Okay, and I apologize. I missed that earlier. Um, I wouldn't have asked it if I'd seen it. But so, thank you for for looking into that. Um, no worries. Sorry, I don't. I, I don't know that we got it back to you. Uh, but five years. So that for anyone who's wondering, is the anticipated lifespan, and we do expect that we'll be able to utilize utilize the uh, technology. You know, from what we learn. Um, at CDC, utilize it and consider using it in other ways. Okay, thank you. Dr. Harrison, did, did you have a comment? I did. I think we, one of us had asked about how many students we anticipate could actually take advantage of this technology opportunity. So over the five uh, ask, years. Ask the question again, I'm sorry, Dr. Harrison. How many students, are all the students at the site going to be able to use this virtual reality equipment? Is Marshall, is Ms. Marshall Thomas on the line? I, I am on it. The, the purpose for this particular use is just for students in the Ag Academy. So it's for the students that are already enrolled in Ag Academy and, and the additional students that will continue to uh, become a part of that academy. I got you good. I think Ms. Williams answered it too. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's the Agricultural Academy. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, board members, are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items finance? So moved. Second. Um, Ms. Hilliard has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Now, board members, we have the consent agenda items personnel. All of the consent agenda items personnel have been reviewed by the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda item personnel? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Is there a consideration to hold an executive session? There being none, is there a motion to adjourn? I shall move. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Did second I get a second? Key. Um, Dr. Harrison has second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, um, the motion is approved and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for participating um, in this meeting and I apologize for the irk and jerk again. This is good as all. <laughs> That's real life. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, stay safe. Bye everybody. You too. Bye, that was a Bye -bye. great, it was a great discussion.
in Thanks the beginning, all. Dr. Green, about our work. Thanks, okay. ma'am. I appreciate it. Stay tuned. We've got more to say, more to tell. Great. Great. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. Good night.